Hey coders, what's up? I hope you guys are having a great day. Chris here, and as promised, we are going to start with the dynamic version of the YouTube app, or the so-called advanced version. We're going to build off of the simple, hard-coded data version. So for those of you guys who are just joining us, in late November, we started building a YouTube app, but it was the so-called simple version where we had hard-coded the video data or the video IDs that we wanted to display inside of the Xcode project. And so it wouldn't update dynamically, but it was a lot easier and a lot simpler for beginners to follow. A bunch of you guys expressed interest in learning how to do the dynamic version, which is to have the app go through the YouTube data API, download the feeds, parse the feeds to display the latest content from the channel. Now, if you haven't gone through the simple version yet, or you're a beginner just starting out with Swift and building apps, I would recommend you do the simple version first. And furthermore, we're going to build off of that simple version. So, so think of this as a continuation of that simple version YouTube app series. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to link to it on the screen. So click that, it's gonna open up the video series in a new window for you. So please check that out first. All right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at how we're going to accomplish this. What I have here is the getting started guide for the YouTube data API. There's going to be a couple of things you need to do first before you're going to be able to work with the API and to retrieve data. Hopefully you are able to go through the Molten Shopping App videos last week. So we also worked with an API in that video series. Anyways, with the YouTube data API, you're going to need a Google account in order to access the Google Developers Console. And we're gonna have to create an API key, and then we're going to need to create an application or register our app with it. That's going to give us this API key, which we're going to include in every single one of our requests to retrieve data. So for example, if we go over to the reference section and we take a look at playlist items, and we want a list of playlist items, we can make a request like this. And then we can specify different parameters. We're gonna to have to pass in the API key and it's gonna to return to us a response in JSON, which we're going to parse and retrieve those playlist items. So for example, the most recent uploads is actually a playlist. So we're going to be working a lot with playlists. Okay, so how are we going to make these requests and parse the responses? Well, we're going to use a library called Alamo Fire. It's a really popular library used in a lot of popular apps that allows you to very easily handle networking in your app. So scrolling down a little bit more, we can see that there's a way to install it through CocoaPods, which, which we learned in a previous video. If, if you didn't see that video, click on the thumbnail in the upper right hand corner and you can jump to that video and watch that section to install CocoaPods and learn how we can include libraries for use in our Xcode project. Okay, so with that said, let's first of all install Animal Fire in our YouTube app project. So I'm going to open up Terminal and I am going to go to my YouTube app folder. So I've got it on my desktop. I'm going to go to CD Desktop and it's under YouTube. It's under YouTube app. And here I'm going to type in pod init. Now if I open up the folder in my finder window, I'm going to see that I have a pod file. And all I'm going to do is open it up in my text editor. And let's follow these instructions here to install it. Okay, so let's uncomment the platform, uncomment use frameworks. And inside here, let's put pod almo fire comma tilde 3.0 okay save it that should do it i don't know if we need this line up here i'm going to close the file go back to terminal and in here i'm going to say pod install so wait a while while it retrieves alamo fire and installs it okay so it's complete and from this point on we open up the xc workspace file when we want to launch our project. We're not going to do that just yet. We're actually going to jump back over to the guides, uh, getting started, because we're going to jump into the Google Developers Console to retrieve that API key right here. So we're going to click this link 
and I'm going to switch accounts to my code with Chris email. By the way, don't use that email right there. It's my personal email and I won't answer any questions on it. So uh, if you want to reach me, you can use the contact form at the bottom of codewithchris.com. All right, so let's see what we got here. Google APIs, let's click that. And right away we can create a new project. So I'm going to call this the YouTube app demo. All right, it gives me a project ID right here. Let's see what the advanced options are. All right, we don't need to worry about that. I would not like to be emailed and okay, click yes, create that. Okay, so down here you can see that it's creating it. And here our page has been refreshed. So what we got to look at is the YouTube data API right here. And I want to enable this API. And by doing that, it tells me that the API is enabled, but I can't use it in my project until I create credentials. So click go to credentials right now to create them. All right, so what type of API are you using? I'm using the data API version three. And where will we be calling it from? I'm gonna choose iOS. What credentials do I need? Let's click that. And it seems like the only action I can do here is cancel. So let's go back see what happens okay so here you need credentials to access the APIs uh, let's click new credentials I'm going to choose API key I'm going to choose iOS key and here I'm going to just say let's see Google verifies that each request comes from an iOS app that matches one of the bundle identifiers listed below although this is optional so we don't actually have to specify a bundle identifier but if you want, you can make it so that only requests from your app's bundle identifier is accepted. And where is the bundle identifier? Well, let me show you really quickly. In your Xcode project, if you click on the root node and go to your project properties, this is the bundle identifier. So if you wanted, you can copy this and you can paste it here and only requests from that app will be used will will be accepted essentially so here i'm going to call this the my youtube app demo key create okay and now we've finally got an api key after all those steps you only need to do this once though so why do we need an api key to access the youtube data api well one thing is so that youtube or google can identify who's calling their api and they can contact you if something is wrong or something comes up with that. Another thing is that they actually have a quota, so you can't overuse the API. But for our purposes, I don't think we would ever go past that quota anyways. Okay, so we're going to need to keep this API key handy. And if you guys don't want to go through the trouble of creating a Google account and signing up for this API key, uh, I'm just going to make this public. So I'll include it in the link below the video and you can use my API key. I hope that's not against the rules, but hopefully you guys don't tell anybody either. But at least that's going to get you guys uh, up and running quickly and so that you can hit the API and re retrieve some videos. So that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for subscribing and sharing and, and generally supporting Code with Chris and the Code with Chris YouTube channel. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye for now.